Hey everybody, welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and welcome to another episode of Questions and Coffee with David. This is where I answer all the questions that you guys are sending in via email, via Facebook, via YouTube comments, Twitter, so on and so forth. And I try to answer them in video format because quite frankly, I don't have the time to type out every single response. I get dozens of emails a week and I'm a little behind. I apologize for that, but I'm going to try to answer a few questions today. I'm going to shoot a bunch of Q&A videos. You'll see them over the upcoming week. So if you want one of your questions answered in a future episode of Questions and Coffee with David, send it to info at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. That's info at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And I'll be sure to feature your question in an upcoming episode. So before we jump into this week's questions, if you have uh, any questions at all, you can email me. If you like what you see in this video, hit that subscribe button. Also go out to facebook.com slash home recording made easy. Follow me there. And for more tips, tricks, concepts, and training around every aspect of home recording, mixing, and mastering, be sure to go to home recording made easy.com. Check out the quick mix series and the made easy series. And if you want five free training products to go directly to your email inbox, $110 worth of training courses in value, Sign up to be a VIP member. You not only get the five free courses, but you also get special pricing and discounts and coupons and freebies and extra training that the general public does not get just for being on my email list. And again, you'll get five free courses. It's right on the homepage at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. So now let's jump into this week's set of questions. Question number one comes from Albert, and Albert writes in, Hello, just bought a PreSonus Studio Live 16 mixer with a course Studio One uh, as which of course has Studio One as a DAW. Uh, all is working fine as far as he, I can see. I've upgraded to Studio One professional level. I have the system hooked up to a Mac with High Sierra operating system with uh, also 32 gigs of DDR3 RAM. That's a pretty powerful machine. Good job. Question I have is, do I need an extra audio interface? What are the benefits if I buy an extra audio interface? Please help me out. Many greetings from Holland. Albert, Albert, thanks for writing in. And he says, P.S., I've already learned a lot from your free content you offer. When I think I'm ready, I will surely dive in deeper. Well, the free content is the VIP free courses I just mentioned earlier. Albert, check them out. I hope you dig them. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for writing in from Holland. So, you have a 16-channel mixer, um, and you want to know if you need an extra interface. No. The 16-channel mixer has great preamps in them, especially if you bought a brand new one and you bought one of the Series 3 mixers. You have the same preamp that's in the Studio 192, and those are great preamps. There's no reason for an extra... Um, interface. Use the mixer as your interface. That's what I do here in my studio with the Studio Live 32. No, no extra interface required. So there's an easy one. I hope I answered your question. If you have any other questions, Albert, be sure to write in. And of course, uh, dive into those Quick Mix Series products that you got for free. Let me know how you like them. So now let's go on to question number two. Question number two comes from John. And John writes in, oh, I got to make this bigger. I can't see this. Okay. John writes in, absolutely love these videos. I am making my way, th my way through them slowly as I simultaneously tinker on my audio box slash Studio One software, and you are such a huge help. As a history teacher, this, is, this, this realm is not my cup of tea. Well, thanks so much, John. I'm glad that you uh, find my teaching style helpful, and I'm glad I'm helping you get through the beginning stages of getting everything hooked up. One quick question. I noticed that your version of Studio One, and I actually think we have the same or closer to the same version. I'm running 3.55. Uh, you have a lot of extra options I don't. For example, under the Styles tab in the Create New Song, you have a ton of styles. I have only two, vocal, guitar, and empty song. Is that because I haven't downloaded all the extra add-ons? I am only running the basic version and that came with my AudioBox i2. Um, is this because you're on a Mac and I'm on a PC or is it because do you have a later version of software compared to mine? Those are all valid questions, John. Small question, but curious as I've noticed a few variances between your setup and mine. Thank you as always. You are a great teacher and I'm learning a lot. Seriously, you deserve mad apples on your desk, John. Well, thank you, John. Coming from another teacher, that means a lot because I am not a professional teacher. I'm an audio engineer that likes to help and teach people. And some people like the way I teach and some people can't stand the way I teach, but I just do what I do. And I'm glad that you and a lot of other people like it. Now, the answer came in the second half of your question. Really, you have the AudioBox i2. That is the software that you got Studio One with that interface. You have what is known as, I believe, the artist version, which is a scaled down version from the professional version, which is what professional version, which is what you see in all my videos. So yes, those are the differences. There are two or three 
There's lots of differences, but the two or three major ones are the professional version has the mastering suite called the project page, which the artist version does not. That's one thing. So you can master your stuff as well as mix it. Um, the uh, professional version allows you right out of the box to be able to use MP3 files, import and export, as well as use third party plugins and third party software instruments. The artist version does not, but you can purchase an add on pack to the artist version that will allow you to do those two things. Um, as well as the uh, the professional version, again, has a lot more styles and templates, and that's what you're kind of alluding to. Now, in your PreSonus account, when you register your software, there are some extra download stuff that, that are not on the disk originally. So you want to check that out, because some of the things that you might be missing could be extra downloads and add-ons, loops and stuff. But I know the professional version comes with a hell of a lot more loops, a heck of a lot more um, software instruments and such. So when you uh, registered your artist version in your, uh, in your PreSonus account, there is gonna be a section for the extra stuff that came along with the software that was not part of the, extra, of the original install. Make sure you install all of, all of those, then reopen Studio One to see what the differences are. But it sounds like to me you're using the artist version and that is the difference. Um, so is it worth the upgrade to the professional version? Um, yes, once you're ready. I mean, those, those three things alone that I said, the MP3 stuff with the third party plugins and the mastering suite alone, to me that is worth the extra money to, the prof to go to the professional version, but it really all depends on your workflow and your needs. So John, thank you so much for writing in. Any other questions, hit me up, buddy, and I will take care of you. So now let's move on to the next question. Question number three comes from Donnie. And Donnie writes in, let me expand this so I can actually read it. Okay, here we go, Donnie. I really appreciate your YouTube videos. Great content, I'm working through them now. I have a question or two. I am a good songwriter and arranger, but technically on digital systems, I struggle. I have used Cakewalk since DOS 3.1, and I basically record tracks then I use, I basically record track then to uh, to another studios to complete the projects. Since Cakewalk dropped off the planet when I just purchased their lifetime of upgrades, I know Gibson bought Cakewalk and shut it down, and I know a lot of users that are in your boat. I am now a Studio One 3 newbie. Great, that's what a lot of people are doing, and it's a great thing to move over to Studio One. The learning curve is not nearly as bad as if you were to go to Pro Tools, trust me. I was told this is the best software to DAW to jump into, as I've always been attempting to learn a DAW, and I found your materials. So you're on the right track, Donnie. You're, you're out of Cakewalk, you're in Studio One, you come to the right place. I might be interested in some one-on-one -on -one tutoring uh, someday, but I wanted to ask first. I've been on a PC since the mid '90s. It seems right when, when I was sort of get when I was sort of getting going, and I have and I'm and I'm going, and I have equipment issues. I have a good system, an i7, 16 gigs of RAM, but having dropouts. Notice you used Apple. Thinking about making the move to Apple, but the cost is so high. Do you mind sharing your thoughts between PC and Mac, Donnie? Donnie, thanks for writing in, and welcome to the PreSonus ecosystem. Home Recording Made Easy, my YouTube channel, as, as well as the home studio trainer, Johnny Geib, Johnny Lipsham Studios, johnnylipshamstudios.co.uk, all great resources, plus there's a bunch of others. Believe me, the PreSonus community will take good care of you. Now, PC or Mac? Your audio dropouts have nothing to do with the fact that you're on a PC. It sounds like you got an i7 with 16 gigs of RAM. There's other things and other settings inside of Studio One and in your PC and your operating system that you can uh, optimize to relieve that problem. Um, but it, I have to know more specifics. So it's not a Mac PC thing. My thing with Mac and PC is this, and I, you're right, I am on a Mac and I've been on a Mac now since about 2009, okay? So I've been on a Mac for a long time. I used to be on a PC. Back in the days of Windows uh, Vista, way back in the day, and Windows Vista, for all your Windows historians, know that Windows Vista was a disaster, <laughs> especially in the audio world. Um, and lots of problems, lots of compatibility issues, crashing, all that stuff, at least for me. At that time, I was getting more serious about my recording, more serious about my home studio. That was before home recording made easy really started. And so I knew and noticed that a lot of studios that I worked in in the past, they all used Apple. Nobody used a PC back then. It, very few, I should say. And so I jumped into a Mac and I love it. And I've been with it since. I have the Apple iPhone, the iPads, iMacs, Mac Pros. I'm in the Apple ecosystem. Apple watches the whole ball of wax. So that's why I'm on a Mac. And I've been on it for so long, I just love it. 
Now, since that time, PC has come out with Windows 7, Windows 10, and from what I'm told, and I know people that use Windows that love it have no problems. Johnny Geib over at the Home Studio Trainer uses PC. He also uses Mac as a test thing, but his main rig is PC. Johnny Lipsham Studios that I mentioned earlier, he's also a PC user, um, and they seem to like it. I'm not a Windows person, um, and it's not because I don't think it's any good today. I just don't have any experience with it. I always tell people that Macs are were typically built for video and audio production more so than a PC. Macs tend to have less problems with things like viruses and stuff than PCs do. Um, but also, Mac is a little bit more strict on the way they do things in their OS, where PC is a little bit more flexible. So depending on other things you may want to be doing and other things you want to hook up to your computer, that could or could not be could or could not be an issue. Having said all of that. You're right, Macs are far more expensive, but what I have found is that Macs tend to last a lot longer, meaning that typically in the past when I was on PCs, and a lot of people that use PCs, you know, every three or four years, they outgrow their computer, they buy a computer. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, a Mac, I've been on Macs and I've had them 10 years, and they run as good as the day as I first bought them. Now, again, that's not to say there's not a lot of PC users out there that have Macs for uh, PCs for a long time. I'm sure there are. I just don't have any experience with it. The other thing I like about Mac over PC is you pay more, but a lot of the software comes with it, that you don't have to buy th a lot of third-party software. For example, um, this is a little bit beyond the audio world if you're using your computer for dual purpose. Mac comes with their version of Microsoft Word, Pages, their version of Microsoft Excel, Numbers. It comes with GarageBand. It comes with uh, a lot of those other, uh, and those are the ones that are on the top of my head, a lot of those other things that if you were to buy a PC and one of the equivalents, you have to go out and buy a Microsoft Office. You have to go out and buy yourself a DAW, things like that. So there are some advantages to having Mac f from that respect. So upfront, you're paying for more, but my experience is they last longer, and over time, the cost is about the same. Um, also, um, today, um, you also have things like Apple Care and the Apple Store and the Apple Genius Bar. Um, and I've never really had a lot of issues with my computer, hardly any. Um, but a couple of times I've known people that have, and you go down to Apple and they took good care of you, and everything is covered. You know, I've gone in with my wife's lap, my wife's MacBook Pro laptop and had uh, a piece of hardware inside of it died. It's a 2011. It died in 2016. They replaced it for free. It's a $400 part. They didn't have to do that. Try that with a PC. There's nowhere to go when there's a PC. You don't have a store you can go to. There's no support. You know what I mean? You have to know people. So when you think about a computer, you got to think about those kinds of things. It's not just the sticker price. Macs are going to cost more, but in my opinion, they're more cost effective over time. They're more reliable over time, and I've just had better luck with them personally. However, the problem that you're having with audio dropouts and stuts, because you have a high-end computer here, it sounds like, an i7 with 16 gigs of RAM, you should not be having audio dropouts. If you are, there's something else going on there that we can fix. Um, but if you're ready to make a move to another computer, think about what are you going to be doing with that computer in the next five years? Is this a dedicated computer to your studio, or is this a multi-purpose computer that you use for other life things? My computers in my studio are all dedicated just to recording audio and video, and they're studio computers. I don't do uh, X spreadsheets on them. I don't do a lot of email on them. I don't do internet stuff with them, rarely. I try to keep the computers as clean and as pure as possible, because that will help keep things running as efficiently as possible, which is big time when you, you need that big time when you're recording audio. So that's my thoughts on Mac and PC. I'm not saying don't use a PC. I'm saying if you have one and you have something like you do, we should be able to get that straightened out. But if you're looking to make the move, consider Apple and consider some of the other things that I mentioned. And again, weigh them both. And again, you could go and ask a PC user and we'll say, Everything that I just said is absolutely uh, not worth talking about, and they have their own set of opinions, and I respect that, and I don't disagree. I know lots of people with PCs that have, f have remarkable results, um, but I'm so far into the Mac ecosystem at this point that I couldn't tell you what is the PC world like today as far as uh, reliability and stuff. I have no experience in it, so I'm sorry about that. But those are my thoughts you wanted to know, Donnie, and I shared them with you. So. That's it for that question. Let's move on to the last question of this video. Uh, let's go over here. Oh, this looks like it's going to be a little bit of, let's jump on this one first and we'll do the next one in the next video. Okay, this one comes in from Jerry and Jerry writes in, uh, uh, hello, like and enjoy your uh, YouTube videos. Thank you so much. 
very quick question. I'm thinking about buying a Studio Live 32 as a DAW controller for Studio One as an interface. My only concern is the transport, where the, the transport controls are. Do you find that it's a stretch on the arm uh, at, all, at all on long sessions as it's located near the top of the mixer? Many thanks, best Jerry. Well, Jerry, thanks for writing in. Love the Studio Live. He uh, is talking about the um, obviously the, the the transport controls, which you know you guys can't see it, but you got to kind of reach out a little bit. It's probably a foot and a half away from where I'm sitting to hit the stop and the play and the record buttons. Um, to be honest with you, when I'm using it in a mixing stage, I don't even use the transport controls. I use my keyboard. I still have a keyboard. I use the space bar for play, space bar for stop. I very rarely, uh, and I use the shortcuts on my keyboard for all the transport controls. I don't need to reach up here. Um, if I was, do, you know, if, if I didn't have a keyboard, if I was recording a live club or you know, a live band in a club or something, then I would need the transport controls. But I don't find myself doing lots of reaching because I do everything more closely. Do I think it would be an issue based on where I see it and reaching, constantly reaching? Um, I don't know that it would be an issue, but if you're doing lots of stops and starts, yeah, I guess maybe over time it could be. You have to try it out and, and see. But I, I'd say, no, I don't think it's a real problem, but I don't really use it in that way. I use it on the keyboard, so it's it's not that big of a deal. Um, I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't let that be the reason why you don't buy a mixer for a surface control. It is a fabulous surface control. The, D, the DAW mode, killer. So don't let that be the reason why you don't go with this mixer. You'd be crazy. The, the mixer has so many wonderful things about it. That's the least of your problems, at least in my opinion. Okay, so Jerry, thanks for writing in. If you have any other questions, please send them in. I'll be glad to help. So that is it for another question, another episode of Questions and Coffee with David. Again, thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me for a bit. And uh, again, go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Make sure you click on the VIP button. Get your free content. Hit that subscribe button. Share these videos all over social media. The more you help me promote homerecordingmadeeasy.com, the more content I can create for you. And I really do appreciate all your support. And I will see you in the next video. Take care.